Tonight we delve into the ever-evolving world of the sharing economy. As they say, sharing is caring. This is DXV Today. Welcome to another show of DXB Today. Nowadays, sharing is not only caring, but also economically empowering. Tonight, we are exploring the fascinating ways in which people are well, redefining traditional notions of ownership. From ride-sharing to co-working spaces, the sharing economy has become an undeniable force of change. And today, we meet some of the individuals and organisations at the forefront of this revolution. So join us as we uncover the stories, innovations and challenges of this transformative movement that's reshaping industries and communities worldwide. So gentlemen, what would you share and what would you definitely not share? I think I'd pretty much share everything. Really? Maybe underwear, but other than that, <laughs> I'm pretty much happy to share anything, yeah. Tom? I don't know, I was thinking about this earlier. I'm from a big family. I'd like to think I'm a sharer, but I don't think I am. <laughs> I'm from a big family, and we learned quick that if you share, you go hungry. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, and I still to this day, if you take me to a posh restaurant and they do all those sharing platters, that's not I'm your not thing. Do you just start pulling them towards you? Like, these are all mine, actually. I'm not comfortable <laughs> with that. I want, I, want, I want a dish to myself somewhere yeah. along the line. Okay. I don't like sharing my car. Sometimes you have to, but I don't like other people driving my car, changing the seat. It's adjusted the way I like it. You see, yeah, that's yeah. where I'm different. Car, not bothered about it. Food, not bothered. But my clothes, my shoes, my handbags, no way. You know not even you buy... my sister can borrow my clothes. You know when you buy those in the shop, someone else has tried them on before you've bought them, right? Yes, but I always wash them before okay, I actually yeah, wear fair them. Fair enough. <laughs> but it's one of those things, isn't it? It's clothes. If I, I, I lend... I've got to an age now where... Um, my son wears a lot of my clothes, not my not my casual clothes, things like that. But if he's got, like, he's got his prom coming up and things like that, Ooh. so he wants to borrow a suit and things like that. Um, and I, uh, and, and, and he, he, he took some stuff out the other day and he came back and it was just, he'd ruined it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's, I just don't like that. No, sharing my clothes is not an option. That's fair enough. Sorry, Faris, I guess you're not borrowing swap. anything yeah. from my wardrobe. Passing down <laughs> is fine, but sharing. Uh, no. Yeah, no, I'm a big believer in giving clothes and, you know, hand-me-downs and things like that. That's Once you're done fine. with it, yeah. when I, Once I'm done with it, <laughs> anybody else can have it, but I'm not sharing anything else. <laughs> Uh, right, we are going to be delving into this in all... Not just clothes, we promise, all right, <laughs> over the course of the next uh, hour or so. But um, it's not just us. Our guest co-host today represents one of the biggest names driving this global shift forward and towards collaborative consumption. Uh, so, time now for us to find out who today's guest co-host is. Hi, I'm Chris Milbourne from Dubizzle, and I can't wait to tell you more about the UAE's favourite classifieds platform. More from Chris a little later on in the show. And the story of De Bizzle, that's coming up shortly. But before we do, uh, let's take a moment, if we can, to highlight a brand that controls fashion waste by helping people extend the life uh, cycle of clothes and getting some return on their wardrobe investment. Who other than Nimi Meta went down to find out a little bit more? Today we are at Rent Your Wardrobe, which is a hidden gem no more, as men and women from all over the city are coming here to ensure sustainable wardrobe practices. We're going to be sitting down with the founder, Mamda Aurora, to find out more. Joined by the founder of Rent Your Wardrobe, Mamda Aurora. Welcome to DXB Today, Mamda. This is such a great concept. I want you to tell me more about Rent Your Wardrobe and how the idea came. So Rent Your Wardrobe is, as we say, sustainable wardrobe. Why we say sustainable wardrobe? Because this is something where you can pick your dress as per your occasion. You mm. need not to just buy and hold. Mm. This, is, this is something, it's a ready-made wardrobe, maintenance-free wardrobe. So this idea was always there in my mind. It was just, you know, we got some time in during pandemic and we thought like, let's do it because this is the region when we are here in UAE where people are looking forward to more and more variety of clothes because obviously they have a lot of events, a lot of uh, 
parties mm-hmm. so why not we can create some some kind of a water where they can save money they can of course they get variety mm-hmm. so that's how we we got up this idea and we started working on it and we launched this sustainable wardrobe in 2021 it's been 2 years and there are so many benefits to this yeah. as you mentioned i mean you're doing good with the sustainability aspect but financially it makes sense maintenance and space what benefits have you seen your clients really come into just by using your service so when people they come to us and rent it, they want to rent dresses so that means they're looking for something exclusive which is not available in the market and of course they want to save money because they know that they're not going to wear it again so that's the benefit they are getting and most important they need not to maintain it mm. we are the one who are taking care of laundry dry cleaning ironing everything absolutely and you know you have such a variety i've looked through it western indian and now catering to men and women yes now we are because we we used to get a lot of inquiries from men as well that why can't we also have such wardrobe <laughs> so then that's how we started we started with indian attires and we really got very good response mm. and of course recently uh, we have added uh, tuxedos as well no and i love that the yeah. thing is uh, you know generally around the world there's been quite a negative connotation around renting a wardrobe renting dresses Can you tell me why that isn't valid and why we should break that mold? When you're renting clothes that means you are contributing towards saving planet, saving resources because it's all about how much we can utilize whatever is already existed rather than creating more demand for you know manufacturing new. Mm. So this is what happening if you see the more demand we are creating for disposable clothes I call it mm-hmm. fast fashion clothes yeah. because we know that when we buy those clothes we know that we're not going to wear it. So this is what happening. So we need to find such solutions so that we can control this demand mm-hmm. or we can you know supply the clothes but in a sustainable way so mm-hmm. that we should control both ways. Well, you know, you're doing amazing things. <laughs> People need to know more about you and use your service. Rent your wardrobe right here in Barsha Mamta. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome. Thank you. After looking around at all the variety of dresses, I have found my dress of choice. Let's go try it on. So, uh, there you have it. Rent your wardrobe is your next stop. If you're like me and you like to look different at every single event you go to, not only will you look great, you'll feel even better, but you'll be doing great for the environment as well. Well, this is slightly awkward. Uh, have you changed your mind, Amy, about sharing clothes now after seeing that? No, but I think it's a great initiative for those that do want to share clothes. <laughs> well, we'll more on that later. Right now we're joined in the studio by the social media manager at none other than Dubizzle. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Dubizzle, I mean, I think one of the first words I heard when I moved to the UAE, it's so synonymous with the place. When did it all start? way back in 2005 we've got a time machine so effects to go back all the way back then it's hard to believe it's 18 years ago this year will be legal to drive to, it's just crazy to think oh wow yeah <laughs> uh, and it's been basically the go-to place to buy and sell anything pretty much be cars property clothes um electronics everything in between as well and where do you see the most interest if you have that information is it in the classifieds just random like furniture and stuff or is it in the cars or the properties it's actually separated into two categories cars are obviously very popular and everyone's their own mode of transport here and everyone wants to get to a and b and then obviously properties is a big one as well everyone needs a roof over their head and uh, we see a lot of listings especially when it comes to renting and selling you know this is a big market for real estate agents and housing and stuff like this it's incredible what's listed nowadays is there been an element of education along the way as well cuz I, i remember back in 2005 when dubizzle came on and classifieds were something still fairly new to people here and people didn't thought you know that we were we're in a sort of economy where people go out and buy new 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 etc has there been a sort of element of education along the way and there certainly has been a big change i mean uh, for those of us who've been here a very long time we remember the billboards at local supermarkets or in the community centers where you'd put a little uh, ad on the wall and you put your phone number one picture and everything like that and then it took a while because obviously you have to wait to see if the right people would actually go to the supermarket go oh oh yeah I want that car oh I, w- I want that pair of clothes or those shoes or something like that um but yeah it's uh, again what you mean a lot of people always buy new i always find myself i'm one of those people that always buys new but then eventually when you're looking for something you might not actually find it mm. due to stock shortages when especially when it comes to cars new devices like this uh, an online classifier platform such as dubizzle is a great way to find what you want you know you can find a great deal you can find uh the exact spec uh of the car or 
the phone that you're looking for. Mm. So obviously a lot of people now are adapting to the second-hand market. Okay, so how has the brand evolved since 2005? I mean, I remember like a while ago, like selling like furniture on there. Is it, are you still using the same ideas that you were initially when the website opened or are you, have you evolved since then? So we've certainly evolved in a number of ways. I mean, uh, last year we opened up uh, the Debizzle Cars Hub and then we had the yard open shortly after that. Okay. So we, we now buy and sell our own cars you know, that come with inspection reports, you know, makes it easier for the buying and selling process. We've got obviously Debizzle Properties where you can list properties for rent, for sale. Uh, you can look for pretty much anything all over the Emirates. Um, the classified platform where you said furniture, uh, garden and stuff. Uh, we've got Debizzle Jobs where you can search mm -hmm. for your new job. I found my first job on Debizzle, <laughs> but not this one obviously, but uh, <laughs> I found it on Debizzle all those years ago. I can't believe I've been using the platform since 2008. Mm. Uh, it's just incredible. 15 years I've been using it, the sole platform. Um, and of course there's many, many other things that we, you know, we're constantly evolving to make life easier. Um, Going back to the cars thing, for example, when it makes you know, when it comes to buying a car, it can be a tough decision. You know, you don't know if you're what you're looking for exactly. You don't know what your budget is. You don't know what uh, it's good when it comes to fuel economy. What's even a good car to buy? And with Debizzle Cars, obviously, we have that facility that we can assist you in your buying process, even the selling process as well. Mm. You know, we give you an on-the-spot um, evaluation, 60 minutes, inspect the car fully to give you that peace of mind. It's interesting to see how much Dubizzle's grown in just the five years that I've been here and been witnessing it. But how does Dubizzle set itself apart from other platforms? Like I know Facebook Marketplace is a big place where people buy and sell items. Does Dubizzle offer anything different in terms of assurances to protect customers, etc.? The one thing that we launched late last year was verified on Dubizzle. So this is a system that adds that extra step of security, you know. Uh, so what you get is you get a blue badge on your account. So throughout your chats, uh, even on your ads, you get a nice blue badge that says that you're a verified user. No blue ticks, uh, no? No, you do get blue tick as well. You get that in the chat only. Okay. Uh, but uh, basically what it is, it's a system that tells other people that you are a trustworthy person to buy or sell from. Uh, and it gives that extra sense of security. Um, it's, it also gives you stuff like higher ad placement, you get priority support, and best of all, your ads are actually placed higher on the platform, so more people will see what you're buying and selling. So, in the age of the super app, or well now we've even got the ultra app as well, and a lot more companies wanting to offer more services as well, what's the sort of uh, conversations within Dubizzle.com and the, the HQ at the moment as to how far this can go in terms of services offered on the platform? The sky's the limit. I mean, there's so many things that we could obviously Airline add to it. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> there is technically a tickets and vouchers section, so you might find yourself a deal on airline tickets at some point. I wouldn't recommend, obviously, buying tickets and vouchers. <laughs> it might be someone else's name. What if they got you economy and you ruined all five business? That's not what you want, is it? Um, but, of course, we've got such a, you know, a wide range of uh, verticals within classifieds and everything else that's there. You can, it's the... Uh, the opportunities there are limitless. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much that you can do. Yeah. And, have you, and find. have you seen a trend change anything happened recently like COVID-19 obviously a lot of people lost their jobs a lot of people decided it's time to save money have you seen like a surge of any point or has it been quite consistent over the past decade let's say well obviously yeah a lot of people uh, during the pandemic you know now that it's over thanks to the government initiatives that we've had over the past couple of years um, it's got a lot easier but obviously during the pandemic uh, people were looking to sell cars furniture um, houses you know as fast as possible just to get that extra cash flow in and obviously with a second-hand marketplace the easiest thing to do is obviously list on Divisible. Uh, whatever it is, so you can exchange cash fast. Obviously, during COVID, not probably the best practice to exchange cash, but obviously there were, we did see an increase in it. You know, a lot of people were looking to get the best, uh, the value for money. And have you kept those customers? Have they kept using Dubizzle? Yeah, of course, we're, um, we're uh, on a monthly basis, we're what ranging between 4.3 million uh, active users. Uh, just over a million of them are like, active every single day. You know, they're constantly buying and selling on the platform, we're interacting and communicating with other people on the platform. Incredible. We're going for a quick break, but when we return, we're going to take a look at the, how the world of transport is changing as more people prefer to share bikes. That's up next. Welcome back to DXB Today. Now, have you ever seen those green bikes that you can hop on and hop off around the city? You can't miss them. But let's talk about how renting bicycles is changing commute in Dubai with Kareem, Senior Director of Operations, Mr. Sami Amin. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Now, how recent have these bikes come to the nation? So we launched it in partnership with the RTA uh, in 2020, and it's the first large-scale bike share operation in the region. What, are, uh, what about the regulations of bikes? Because, you know, yes, there is a great cycling infrastructure in place around this city, 
but fundamentally this is a, a city that's built on cars etc is there is there an element of sort of a, a, a education of cyclists of how to abide by the rules yeah um, so cycling culture is very dominant in in Dubai specifically but of course you know we need to make, like uh, uh, comply with the with the regulation yeah. which is you know wearing a helmet and making sure you wear a safety vest um, you know, observing the the traffic on the roads so yeah there, there's a, a strong element of of education and that's what we do as well you know we are engaged with schools with communities majlises but before someone rents one are you able to sort of give them that advice as well we do we do we have it in our app we have it in our stations and we try to educate the people on how to use bike uh, safely in Dubai nice. Incredible. Yeah. So I know when we were just talking uh, there, just in the break, um, you mentioned that um, there are some rules, especially in the downtown area, where you have to wear a helmet. Yes. What are you doing to help people, like especially tourists, that are wanting to come, be able to cycle a bike around the city, but they don't have the equi equipment to be able to do that? So it's, it's a really good question. Um, we are actually uh, about to launch vending machines, okay. uh, so you can get your helmet at the vending machines. Uh, but we always advise people to keep and carry a helmet on them, mm -hmm. you know, if they're going to go for a longer day uh, cycling tour. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we, we try our best to, to help people to use the service safely. But, you know, of course, um, it's, it's on down to the person as well yep. and to make sure that they comply with the regulation. Okay. Now, Sammy, my challenge with the Korean bikes, I've used them around Expo. It was amazing. I loved it. But as far as I know, you have to leave them at a docking station. How can users know where their docking station is or, like, where they're going to leave the bike if they're going to where they're going, especially if they're in a hurry? It's a really good question. Uh, so, so we operate a, a station-based network. Uh, that's what you see usually in Europe. Uh, the advantage is that, you know, you know where to pick them up and you know where to drop them off. So there's a consistency in the service that you get. Um, you can see the stations that we have uh, across Dubai on the app. Uh, we have now uh, over 180 locations uh, across Dubai. And we're going to be expanding every year uh, in partnership with the RTA. So yeah, it's, it's very simple. You can open the app, you'll see where the docking stations are. And at least you, you can expect to, to find a bike there and you know where to drop them. But is there a reason, because I know there's a lot of companies that do the e-scooters around yeah. Marina, around a lot of parts of the UAE, and you can sort of leave those on the street. Is there a reason we can't do that with bicycles? So there, there, there are multiple reasons. Uh, one, um, by having station -based, a station-based service, we're able to offer it at a much, much lower rate. Um, you, you can use the bikes at uh, you know, under two dirhams a day if you're on an annual subscription. And the reason is because you know, we can operate uh, the scheme sustainably. Um, so there's a big cost difference in the service that we can offer by having it station-based. Uh, the other thing is obviously maintaining the, the cityscape in an organized manner. Um, you know, by making the customer bring back the bike to a docking station, we keep the city organized. And that's really important in places like Dubai, in the Middle East in general, where you know, you've got a very nice cityscape that is uh, very organized. Nice way to see the city, alternative way to see the city. It's a little bit hot at the moment, though, as well. So, obviously, uh, tourists um, are, are one element of it. But what about your day-to-day sort of -day users getting from other elements of the RTA mass transportation system? So, a lot of our customers are now commuters. Mm. Uh, almost 70% of our customers use the bike on a daily basis, whether it's going to the grocery store or going to the metro stop or the bus stop. So uh, it's, it's become a mobility tool yeah. for many people and it means that we are not as affected by seasonality as we were before. Um, you know, somebody who doesn't have a car is not just gonna have a car in the summer. Um, and of course we try to make it as easy as possible and you know, we have pedal assisted bikes uh, that's very special in Dubai. Uh, all our bikes are pedal assisted which means that it's still more comfortable than walking. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I used to cycle a lot in the UK and you, you were challenged by rain over there. Mm. Uh, at least we won't have rain. Yes, we, it gets a bit warmer, but it's always going to be dry or most of the time. <laughs> so what are the economic benefits for bike sharing? Oh, there's really a lot. Um, on the one end, when we look at the residents, mm -hmm. um, it activates local communities. You know, instead of going and driving with your car uh, to another community to go to a restaurant, um, you might explore restaurants that are actually close by. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to go shop in, in places that are next to you. 
Uh, so from a resident's perspective, it really activates the local community that you live in, and that's really important. Um, from, a, from a tourist perspective, of course, um, it's a very easy way to you know, explore the city. There's so many beautiful attractions in Dubai. I, I really, it's my, my favorite pastime actually, uh, when I get visitors to, to take them on a cycle tour because you know, we're, we're flexible to see things. So it's, it really, it helps the to tourism, it helps local communities. Uh, and of course, the more money you can save on transportation, the more you can spend. Uh, on other things. Okay. Take them on a cycling tour or send them on a cycling tour? So a it more. depends who's coming. Uh. <laughs> it depends if you need a bit more time for yourselves at home. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. Uh, listen, great to have you with us. Do stay with us as well Thank as we you. continue this conversation on all things sharing. In fact, uh, that's the focus of our spotlight today is on a mobile app uh, that lets people buy and sell used clothes. Here, here's our interview with the co-founder of Bazaar, Elisa Mariano. My name's Alyssa Mariano. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Bazara. I have over 10 years of experience, mainly from the marketing and tech side. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, went to school at West Virginia University, and lived in New York City for about five years before I moved to Dubai in 2017. I'm super passionate about thrifting, buying and selling secondhand, and when I moved to Dubai in 2017, I realized there was a big gap in the market for a mainstream resale fashion platform. So that's why I started Bazaar. There are other platforms that are general marketplaces where you can buy and sell more general things such as electronics, cars, and there's marketplaces that are dedicated to luxury fashion but there is nothing dedicated to mainstream resale fashion in the region. And in the West, there are so many other marketplaces such as Poshmark or Depop, but there is no similar marketplace here in the region. So that's why I created Bazaar. There were several obstacles and challenges that I have faced along the way, um, not only as a founder, but also as a female founder. So as a female founder, of course, there are unfortunately still some gender biases and sometimes I face imposter syndrome. Um, but overcoming those challenges are quite easy when you have a really strong support network and people that support you and you just learn to kind of believe in yourself through those. When we launched Bazaar in 2020, that was unfortunately right when the COVID pandemic happened. So unfortunately, a lot of people lost their jobs during that time. With Bazaar, people can actually earn a lot of extra cash on the side while they're selling their clothes that they haven't worn in months. So that was really a great way to see how people could use the app and we can actually help benefit them. Um, they can earn extra cash on the side, especially when they lost their jobs. It can help them support their lifestyle for a couple of months while they look for a new job. Our long-term vision is we want to become the go-to marketplace for all things circular fashion in the region. Um, a couple of things that we have in the pipeline that are super exciting. So we're launching a brand new version of the app in the coming months. We are launching in Saudi over summer 2023 and Egypt by the end of the year. What I love most about living in Dubai is how connected it is to other places in the world. It's a super easy place to travel from. It's a global hub and um, that's why I love it. Well, it definitely looks like I'm going to be doing some shopping right after the show. But for right now, Amy, you've got a spotlight for us. What is buzzing around the UAE? It's time for the roundup, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, here is some good news for travellers who love a good purse. Yes, luxury membership club Vivrel announced a new partnership with the Four Seasons that allows guests to borrow designer handbags when they stay at select properties free of charge. Now, hotel guests at the select Four Seasons will now have access to luxury accessories with brands like Chanel, Gucci, Dior, Louis Vuitton and Prada. And they have no membership to pay either. Gentlemen, how do you feel about hiring or borrowing a handbag when you visit the Four Seasons? Not sure about handbags. If they've got wallets, I can, <laughs> I can borrow. I'll do that. I think it's a great initiative, to be honest. That, go on, how are you thinking, Tom? I'm just confused by it. Why? Well, surely if you're, if you're a Four Seasons goer... Yes. Um, 
that you're not short of a few quid and you've probably taken a branded handbag with you, have you not? Is yes. this on the occasion that you've forgotten or it doesn't match well, with your I've outfit? Well, I've got to say, Tom, I completely, that wasn't my first thought as well. And I do agree with you that, yeah, probably most people that are staying at the Four Seasons are not going to be borrowing a Chanel handbag because they've probably got one already. However, us ladies, we like to overpack. And sometimes there's not always space in your suitcase for your handbag or that you want to match with a specific outfit. So maybe this platform is great that you can, you know, get that extra handbag to go with your outfit if you didn't be able to fit it in your What's suitcase. What's wrong with the Four Seasons beach bag? Or that? Um, it's got no. the Four Seasons branding on it. Everyone knows where you're staying. No, Tom, if you're wearing a beautiful silk dress and stilettos, that is not going to match. Laundry bag? No. <laughs> thing is, Tom, I mean, you, you're talking about bags. We don't really understand bags and stuff. But I know a lot of people in the country, and Chris, you'll know about this, will rent a Ferrari, will rent a Lotus, mm. because they can't afford the three million dirhams to buy it, yep. but paying a couple of thousand a day to look cool in the UAE, same with a bag, right? Of course, and I, I was actually going to say your exact point, you know, when you go out maybe with the, the other half, they might forget the bag that they need, it might not be big enough, it might be small, not be small enough, it might be too big for the outfit. You've got to understand that the, the other half, they might want to get a nice little handbag that goes with the outfit, like uh, Amy said. So I agree with her point 100%. I mean, I'm thinking... Probably not what you were expecting me to say at all, <laughs> were you? I'm thinking of now... I thought we were now... going to delve into car conversation there, and I was like, oh, I've lost, but I love that we brought it back to handbags. <laughs> what about bag docking stations? Like In Kareem car. bags. No, Kareem bags. You go to the station, you take the bag, you drop it off at a different station. So it's kind of like a... What, would we put it in a luxury car and then the, the handbag goes in the car where you go on the bike? I don't know. Maybe we can all put something together. Sammy, what do you think? Yeah, we could. It would definitely be more cost-effective than having it uh, free-floating. Uh, so there's some advantages, I guess. I Here's the plan. part of past loves, like you were saying, with the, with the, the vending machines mm -hmm. for, for, for helmets, and I suppose it would be luggage bags for the Korean bikes as well. Maybe not Chanel luggage <laughs> bags or anything like that, but who knows? Who knows, There yeah. might be a partnership there, Sammy. You can buy gold bars and vending machines here, so I, I don't see why not Chanel. Okay. That is true. I would, say, I would definitely be using that vending machine if there was Chanel handbags going. <laughs> I'd be so stressed, though, to have, like, a Birkin bag, because I know those things can go for $100,000. don't even know what that is in dirhams. I'd just be scared of scratching it or something. Like, I, I wouldn't trust myself with it at all, especially on holiday. That's the thing, isn't it? Can you, uh, would you, would you, would you, would you trust yourself, as you said, you know, the damage element? Yeah, I... It's like renting a car, isn't it? It's always the worst thing, taking the car back once you've rented it. Get an oh. insurance waiver on a bag? <laughs> I, have that, I have that fear every time. I mean, we drive a lot of cars oh. here at Debizzle, and then uh, every time I you know, park it somewhere, I've got to park it a million miles away from where I actually am, <laughs> just in case. I do it with my own car. Okay? I've, not, I've, not got, I've not got a Ferrari or anything like that. It's got a Volvo, you know? And I, have, I park that thing a million miles away because I don't want someone to scratch it, I don't want someone to ding it. So, yeah, I completely understand. <laughs> Whereas people are just tearing up on Kareem bikes, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> uh, but, Sammy, thank you very much indeed thank for you. staying with us. Time for a quick break now, but we will be back with more insights into the ways that people will share on a daily basis while they work. Uh, don't go anywhere. Stay with us here on DXP today. Welcome back to DXB Today. Our next guest today is elevating work and productivity with on-demand workspaces around the globe. Please welcome Mohammed Khalid, the founder and CEO of Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Super happy to be here. Now, can you tell us, what is Hotdesk? So Hotdesk actually started off as the Airbnb of office spaces, right? That, that's what we originally created it to be, right? We looked, you know, at the market in a post-COVID world, right? Uh, again, co-working spaces are booming, etc. You had a lot of interesting things happen in that industry like we were. So what we ended up creating was an aggregator app that puts all co-working spaces on a single platform and users could book desks, meeting rooms and offices anywhere from an hour all the way to a year, mm -hmm. right? In three, four clicks. That's how we started it. Today, Hotdesk ended up becoming an end-to-end -end technology stack powering hybrid work. You know, the futures work is, is a very interesting topic. It's one of the hottest topics worldwide right now. So here we evolved into creating, you know, software as a service for our spaces, right, um, for co-working spaces, giving them a tool to manage their day-to-day -day activities, everything from pricing, automation, to data analytics, to payments. And then another software as a service for enterprise, right? For businesses to manage their global hybrid workforces and all of their real estate using a single tool. So who is uh, Hotdesk for? Like, who is your clientele base? This is actually a very interesting question. So when, you know, Hotdesk was incepted initially, 
just pre-COVID, you would look at you know the potential user base, and those that users used co-working spaces were like you know startups, the techies, um, designers, and or an offshore office for a company. Fast forward to in a post-COVID world and today. Almost anyone can use a co-working space. So we work with entities like some of the largest banks in the world or, or telecom companies, uh, people that you would never think would actually use a co-working space, but it's, just bec it's become for everyone. When we started delving into also helping companies manage their own real estate with technology, that expanded it even further. I want to know how, how, how COVID changed things. Reason saying, um, the co-working space was obviously trending before COVID, etc. A lot of people looking at the potentials there in... Come COVID, uh, A, co-working weren't ideal. Uh, B, working from home was the buzz. Apparently, C, the office was dead. No one wanted to go back to the office. What have you seen since the return to work? How has it changed? So similar, you know, to all the Web 2, Web 3 stuff, we kind of gave it a term <laughs> of our own. So, so what we call work 1.0 pre-COVID, you would, it was a binary option. You would wake up and, and go to office. You were in office or you were not at work. You were on sick leave. <laughs> then during COVID, it was also a binary option. Either, you know, you're asleep or you're working from home. There was no other option. Enter work 3.0, which is now what we call hybrid forever, right? What we've learned is that there is no one size fits all model. You know, offices are here to stay. Again, we are humans, we want to be there, you want to be in your HQ, mm. feel the brand, you know, meet key management, meet clients, whatever it is. You cannot detach home anymore because we've learned that option of, you know, running errands, being close to your kids, etc. you know, and a bit of comfort and concentration. And then in the middle, co-working pops up, right, as well. So how I see it is, historically, co-working was just for those interested in co-working. Right, as, a, as a specific thing, being be it a startup that doesn't want to pay a lot of you know, capital up front to, uh, or leasing an office, getting into a long-term liability, or you know, you're, you're launching an offshore operation and you don't really want to commit to an office space. But today, it is one of you know, three, four options that you have when you're choosing where you want to work. Now, when you say hot desk, I'm going to do this the, the most literal way, I think. So I'm thinking, obviously, a desk on fire. Now, obviously, that's not what you deal with, is it? Um, when it comes to... Is it renting a desk or is it you, you borrow a desk or what's the correct terminology here to use? So, well, you know, the, the term rent kind of gives off this feeling of long term. Uh, effectively, you are renting it, right? But right now, what we do on our platform is, you know, you can literally take you know, a desk for an hour, uh, for a day, for a couple of hours, for a month, for a year, right? And it's all that you're not fully committed, you know, to all the furniture, the lease, that kind of long-term aspect of it. You're just committed to a specific time frame that you choose, and that desk is temporarily yours for that time. Now, it could be a desk, it could be a meeting room, it could be an office, and they come in all different, you know, shapes and sizes, 16-seater meeting room. You can kind of even filter out amenities, right? So you could choose, you know, I want to work in, in a meeting room that has, you know, video conferencing technology, or I want a workspace that has free coffee, so you can go in and socialize and, and mm -hmm. have fun. So you kind of get to curate your own space and then rent it out, you know, in a bullet fashion for a specific time. And Mohammed, speaking of those amenities, do you offer or do you plan to offer uh, workspaces for very niche jobs? So, for example, if I wanted to do a podcast, could I look for a studio on hot desk? If I was a personal trainer, could I find a gym? where I could train my clients on hot desk. And are there any plans for that sort of thing? Yeah, so I think the natural evolution is, right, our brand is all about productivity, right, and, and helping you get things done, which is our tagline. So we, we don't just sell desks. What we're really selling is, is that ability for you to you know, do what you need. So if your work is podcasts, you could find that room. Now, what we've seen is that because we work with hosts, right, these offices are not ours, right? They, they are our hosts. They list mm. on our platform they are building what the market needs, right? Be it podcast rooms, uh, be it, you know, training rooms, etc. And they come and list on our platform and then we make them available. Now, initially in our first phase of growth, uh, we've currently grown out to 44 countries, 200 cities in the last 18 months. We've really focused on specifically office space, but we've seen that kind of, you know, grow, especially with the rise of mixed use real estate. So you could have a co-working space that has a gym in it, has a spa, uh, right? There are a few uh, cool ones in Dubai, you should try them. Mohammed, you're doing amazing work, and thank you so much for coming on to DXB today. Thank you. All right, you. but for right thank now, Chris, I don't know if you're warned about this. It's quiz not. time. Okay. Yes. What do I win if I if I quiz correctly? We might invite you back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that something you'd like? Um, do I have to answer right now? <laughs> Good way to end the show. That was question one. <laughs> so you're going to have 60 seconds on the clock okay. to get as many answers correctly as you can, and it's all been stuff we've discussed on today's show. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're paying attention. I hope so. <laughs> right. So we can start the counter, the timer, in three, 
two, one. What was the topic of today's show? Was it the sharing economy or exclusive lifestyle? Sharing economy. Is correct. What is the name of the brand controlling fashion waste by helping people extend the life cycle of their clothes? Was it A, pimp my ride, or B, rent my wardrobe? Definitely not the first one, so the second one. Is correct. What year did Dubbizzle start? 2005. Is the right answer. Which new online fashion brand did we spotlight on today's show? Was it B, Zara, or A, Bazaara? A is the right answer. What does Bazaara do? Does it A, let people buy and sell used cars or buy and sell used clothes? B is the correct answer. What is the upside of the sharing economy? Is it A, help people, people own more things or B, create a more sustainable future? Ooh, that's a tough one, B. Is the right answer. Mohammed Khalid is the founder and CEO of what company? Hot, is it A, hot. hot Desk or B, Hold Desk? <laughs> a. It is Hot Desk. How does the sharing economy impact social connections? Does it A, reduce social interaction or B, foster community building? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> How does the sharing economy impact social connections? Is it A, reduces social interaction or B, fosters community building? B. And at the end of that, you got eight points. Very Terrific. well done. What can I do with my eight points? You can uh, try them at uh, Carrefour. <laughs> see okay. if they'll take them. Trade yep. them in at Dubizzle. Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Trade them in at Dubizzle. I can list them for sale on Dubizzle. <laughs> the XB today points. Oh, you're up on and the board. And there you are. You're on the board. You're at number two for the week. Not bad at all. Congratulations. Yeah. Hadil is punching the air right now. <laughs> Well, Chris, you've definitely won a maybe being invited back onto the show, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to use the eight points very wisely. And we can't wait to see you next time, hopefully, on this show. Thank you so much for having me. Mohammed, same goes to you. You do an amazing work with Hot Desk, and we can't wait for you to add more countries onto that lineup. Thank you very much. But for right now, we're going on a quick break. We'll be back with a familiar face and voice, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to DXV Today. And as always, we have amazing performances right here on this stage. And we have one of our favorite voices from the show, Ibi VK. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me again. Now, what have you been up to since we saw you last on DXV Today? Um, well, I've only been focusing on releasing Arabic music, actually, recently. And uh, I've been Allah doing... Jad? Yeah. Wallah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been doing it in more uh, pop acoustic style. So the exact same thing I've been doing in English, but with... Arabic lyrics, and uh, I've actually signed a record deal, finally, with uh, Barco Studio from Abu Dhabi. Congratulations! Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's, uh, it's been uh, pretty cool. So and how's far. the reception been for this new style? Because I know you've been active in the UAE for a long time. We've seen you on DXB today before. You do English mostly. How have your existing fans reacted mm -hmm. to your new Arabic uh, music, and how have you seen it with new fans, maybe, or new people coming to see your stuff? Uh, it's actually been uh, pretty well received because uh, the style is there for uh, the fans that already like the music. Uh, and they're mostly from Southeast Asia, my fan base, which is like um, uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. Uh, and they really like the music more than the lyrics anyway. Uh, but I've been uploading them with uh, translations and transliterations as well. So most of the people had... Uh, positive comments on that and uh, as for uh, the new listeners as well uh, it's been a quicker process than the English music because we're in the Arab region so it's uh, an easier reach for me and before you so, yeah. shout yourself out yeah. I want to know if there's any brands or businesses that we haven't covered on today's show that have, you've seen helping up-and-coming musicians in the UAE when it comes to this type of thing uh, definitely I'm not sure if they're they've been on the show but definitely the Barco studio who I I've signed with I've had record deals from uh, labels before, but the deal that they gave me uh, was something that's very uh, heavy on the artist side. So it's it's really supportive what they've been doing, and they've been doing it for for years. So um, I really love how they've helped the community and everything. They've been more focused on Abu Dhabi because that's where they're based. But right now they've been helping a lot of Dubai artists. Uh, shout out to uh, one of my favorites, uh, ATS Music. I hope you guys have him on the show. He's one of the most hard, hard-working uh, people here. There's Ed, there's Greg Pearson, a lot of the guys that um, that I've seen in the music industry. Uh, I really respect and appreciate. We'll have them. our people call their people. Yeah, but you for got right it. now, pay attention to this because you're going to want to know it. What is your Instagram handle? Where can people follow your journey, listen to your music? Uh, it's uh, ibvk i b b y v k on everything. It's on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, whatever you guys use, Spotify and Rami as well. 
It's all there. Well, Ibi, we can't wait to hear you perform. But for right now, I believe Tom has a very special surprise for us. Tom. Yes, Nick Ferris, thanks very much indeed. Now, remember, you have a chance to win. A one-night stay for two people, including breakfast, down at the Palazzo Versace Hotel right here in Dubai. Couldn't be simpler. Head over to the Dubai One TV Instagram page now. Make sure you're following us. Find the competition post. And all you have to do is convince us to pick you as the winner. We'd also love to hear from you, so don't forget to use the hashtag DXB today to get in touch. Let us know what you are up to or get featured on the show. Any ideas for uh, what you could share that we're not already <laughs> sharing? Could share more, I suppose. I think that's one thing I've learned today. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit of a Luddite still, so still take a little bit of convincing with the... The, you know, the, 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 the sort of e-car sharing things, a bits and pieces like that. I haven't done that yet. Have you not done it? No, no. it's really good. So e-car and you drive. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go, at, let's say, for a night out and you don't necessarily want to drive back, it's very convenient. You can just drive there. You don't have to get into a taxi. It's cheaper. And I'm just the type of person I like driving myself around, yeah. especially if I've got multiple stops. And you just pay by the minute. I haven't done that yet. You done that yet? No. No. I don't share. You don't share? No, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> starting to get that, that idea from you. <laughs> We need to learn to share more. But you know what I do? I love, I love cooking for people and sharing my, you know, hospitality with everybody. <laughs> That's good, yeah. That's nice, no? Sharing, sharing the love, you know. But just don't come for my wardrobe. Oh, yeah, that's, fair enough. That's I, the only thing. I definitely won't. Tom, touch you won't either, right? Don't touch my food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, food you can have. It's OK. Well, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. But before we go, Ibby, you know the drill. So scared and so afraid of you But I guess that wasn't enough to Get over hesitation My mind keeps saying games and I lose Oh, a form of recreation Failure's my destination, yeah, it's true I've got nothing left to lose But I've got no enemies, no, 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 no And I see this fire in me, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. This fire in me. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. We're going to try something fun now. If you guys are watching at home, you guys, come on now. We can sing it together now. It's just three words, and it goes like this. It's just the fire in the fire in the fire in me. The fire in me, 